So you don't know what vector embeddings are? Don't worry. I got you. Now imagine you're describing a movie that you watched to a friend who has no idea about the movie. Now to describe it to them, you'll talk about who the actors are, what genre of the movie it is, what's the running time like, did you like the climax bit, how funny it was, how scary it was, etc. Right? All these are basically features that help us describe a movie. Now researchers realized that they could do something very similar with words. What if we take a word and try to describe it with a lot of features? And for ease of use, they encoded this feature and quantified it with a numerical value. Now when we try to represent these features, we end up with a row matrix like this. This row matrix is basically called a vector. Now these features are not simplistic. They are large in number and they've been learned automatically by a deep learning model that identifies patterns in data. There are models like word to wick and Glove that use 300 features or dimensions to describe words. And since all 300 features are not really human readable, we call it latent feature. Latent meaning hidden. The number of features and the vector could completely vary depending on the model that is used. But the beauty of the vectors that are generated lies in the fact that it is able to semantically preserve the meaning of the words. It is able to retain the essence of the word, which means if we would like to compare two words, we just have to take the vector embeddings of each of these words and compare each of the features individually. This comparison is actually called cosine similarity. Now, why is it cosine similarity? I'll explain that as well. Now, let's visually see what's the significance of cosine here. Now, let's say our word is Harry Potter. I've created a vector embedding for this. Now, I've reduced this to two dimensions and created a script that can help us visualize this vector. Now, this is how the vector Harry Potter looks. Let's take another word called wand and create a vector for it. Now, when we project the vectors of these two words on a graph, we're able to see that these vectors are close together, but they form an angle. Harry Potter and Wand go together, right? So that's the reason they're very close in the two-dimensional space. Now, this is where cosine similarity comes in. An angle of zero means that the vectors superimpose over each other. There is no deviation. They are very similar. Now, let's take a completely different example like square and try to create the vector for it. Now, we see that the vector for square is away from the earlier two vectors that we created, forming a larger angle. So with varying theta, cos theta also changes. That is why we use cosine similarity to compare vectors. I've created a Python script for this visualization. In case you're interested, comment code and I'll send you the link. Now this concept of vector embeddings can be extrapolated to other media as well. Be it documents, audio, video, images, anything could be embedded. And this potential opens the portal into RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, but more on that in the next video.